Well, hello everybody and uh, welcome to another video tutorial. My name is Peter Draculic and in this video tutorial I'm going to be showing you how you can uh, get those reflections here uh, of a semi-wet floor, a floor with spots of, uh, you know, of uh, water on it. So you might remember already this uh, scene uh, from the global illumination uh, faking, uh, you know, tutorial, my previous tutorial. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Let me uh, switch into the 3D view now. And I have added this material to the floor, to the ceramic tiles of the floor. So, first thing I, we need to do is to go to the material editor, for the, having selected the floor object, go to the material editor and we need to uh, unlink this material node so we can create it uh, again uh, all the way from the start but before doing so I want to switch over to the node editor so I can uh, take you for a little tour uh, in this material this is a composite material made in blender internal so I have used as you can see from this little button over here I have clicked on that and I have used nodes for this material and uh, this material is using a glossy uh, node right or shader whatever and a, a rough uh, shader or matte shader i have mixed the both of them using a color mix node and i have output this to the uh, material output node now the uh, the the factor of mixing those two shaders is a texture that i have mapped using the a geometry node to the uv all right, so that was a quick introduction, a quick overview of my material. Now let me switch back to the, uh, to the 3D view. And I want, having selected this flow uh, uh, object here, I want to click on this minus icon uh, over here, button, and I want to unlink the material. Now uh, I have no material attached to my floor. So I'm going to be uh, making a new material, so I'm clicking on new. I'm going to be naming it as ceramic new, all right? And I want to click on this little uh, notes uh, button here, so I can make, I can, I can start creating the notes of my material. So click on that. At first, you see a black material. Don't worry about that though. I'm going to switch over to the note editor again. So. Uh, this is because we have no material node linked to the output material node. So I'm going to be creating a new material. All right, and as you can see now, the output material node has been updated as well. You can see we have our first node here, but this is just a single material node. I'm going to be naming it uh, ceramic uh, glossy. All right, so this material, for this material, I want to give a mirroring effect, a reflecting effect. So, uh, although you, you work, you're working now inside the node editor, you need to have also this material panel uh, always, uh, you know, available. So you can work as well with the mirror and transparency and the extra options of this, uh, of this material. All right, so you want for this material to enable the mirror option. So I want to set the reflectivity to something like uh, 0 0.27 something. All right, and I want to set the color of the mirroring to something like a light bluish color, something like that. Also, I want to, from the shading panel, to enable always a good option, cubic interpolation. And I want to give to the specular highlights a rather a ramp maybe a color ramp and i want to make the first color of the of the of the gradient here to give it a something like a bluish color as well all right and i want to make it to have a, a full opacity and i want very important in the specular uh, panel i want to change the shader the specular shader from from cooktor to world slow for the glossy material and I want to adjust the shape of the slope 
and making it something like really glossy. Okay, so now let me go ahead and add yet another uh, material here, input. So material node in the node editor and I want to click on new and I want to give it the name ceramic rough. Now, the ceramic rough material is going to have a color of, uh, like most of the ceramic tiles, have a brownish color. So I'm giving it a brownish color, something like so. And I want, I forgot to tell you, I need also this color. I need to sample the color. So I want to make this glossy component to have the, the same color as well. Well, I, need, I might need to adjust it a little bit. All right, so something like that. So. For this ceramic, rough ceramic component of our uh, composite material, uh, I need to add a normal map, uh, so giving the impression of the imperfection of the surface. So uh, the, you can you can edit uh, your uh, material your material component. Uh, by the way, either inside the node editor, but if you select the no, the, the node uh, rough ceramic material, you can see that uh, nothing happens here. Right, because uh, the, only the only the glossy uh, material component has been uh, linked to the composite material output. So, if you want to edit your material component uh, working inside the node editor, you have first considered to add a color mix RGB node. So now I'm connecting the sockets here, and I can have an update of the final composite uh, material inside the preview panel. But if you want to edit independently any one of your nodes, you need to go over here to this list and select directly the node. So ceramic rough. Okay, now you can see we have no nodes because we have selected just the element of, uh, of, 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 the, of the composite material, which is itself a symbol material. So I can now uh, work independently on the node by selecting it from this list over here. So I want to add to this material normal map. So I'm switching over to the textures here button, new, and I'm selecting the clouds is a good option for this. So I can play around with the size. Uh, let's say it uh, something like uh, uh, 14 generated the mapping, keep it generated and uncheck the color option here and select normal and set the amount of normals uh, to something like 0 0.5. Now you can have a preview of this material here in the, uh, in the, in the textures panel. All right, something like that. Okay, now let's now switch over to my materials button here, material panel, and select my composite material, the ceramic new. You can see that now it has been updated, this material as well. But you can see that the two nodes are mixed equally together using a factor of 0 0.5. I want to change that by adding a texture that is going to be controlling the way those two nodes are going to mix uh, to get mixed together. So first thing I want to do is to switch over to my 3D view mode uh, panel and I want to select my floor object here. I want to split my screen here and I want, I want to switch over to the UV image center and I want to unwrap them. So, so having selected all the vertices, click unwrap, U to unwrap and you have unwrapped them. Now you want to export the UVs into a separate image file. So UVs, export UV layout. So I'm exporting the UVs and I'm going to import them inside GIMP in just a while. So I have now exported uh, my, uh, my UV layout and I'm importing it uh, through using uh, GIMP, all right? And I have created already in GIMP a, a new image uh, that has uh, 1000 by 1000 pixel uh, width by height, all right? So now that I have here my UVs, I can start painting over. So I want to create a new layer by going here in the layers list, add a, a new layer, all right? I want for this either to have a transparency or the, for, uh, or the background color white, but let's select transparency for the moment, it's okay. So I need to select a brush, so I have detached this uh, uh, brush panel here and for the purpose of this tutorial I'm going to be using uh, that kind of uh, splatter, you know, 
brush. I am going to give it a rather big size and I want to start a painting of my texture. So let me, so don't click and drag, just click and, you know, something like stamps, all right? And if you need to give it more, uh, you know, more contrast, you just click and hold down all right, your left mouse click. So something like so. It does. We don't have to be precisely exact. So now, next thing that I want to do is to export this texture so I can use it inside Blender. So I first have to uh, click on this little eye icon over here so I don't see the UVs. So I just want to export my uh, my image. All right, which is without the UV uh, layout. So I am exporting it and I'm going back to Blender by selecting uh, Export as Shift Control E and you save it inside your computer giving a, 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 an appropriate name. So I need to import this image inside Blender. So I'm selecting it, Ceramic B Mix uh, PNG, Open Image. And now you can see it has been mapped uh, according to the uh, UV layout. So I'm going to be using this image as the factor, as the map that is going to be controlling the, the mixing of the two nodes. So now I want to add a new texture here. So I'm clicking on the new button over here. So I, I'm naming it ceramic, something like ceramic uh, uh, mix, all right? And I want for this texture to have an image or movie. So enable this button, uh, image or movie, and let's select from the list here, ceramic mix. All right, now I don't want to do anything else with the texture. I want to uh, also to deactivate the texture. I don't want this texture to be linked on the object, on the floor object. Instead, I want to use it as a factor in the node editor. So I'm switching over to the node editor, shift A, input this time a texture, and I want to select the texture ceramic uh, ceramic mix here. All right, you can see it. All right, I want also to make the color of the texture to output it in, uh, to the to the factor socket, and I also want to add a geometry node here. And I want to select the, the UV to be the vector uh, input socket for this texture. So you can see now this updated here as well. All right, in the preview panel. So by doing so, we have created our symbol composite material. So I have shown you how to create those uh, composite materials in order for you to take advantage of the Blender internals possibilities and capabilities. If you have a slower machine, a slower computer, or you have some thousands of frames to render, then you should consider using the composite materials that are uh, available uh, in Blender internal. So that concludes our tutorial. If you liked this, this tutorial, don't forget to subscribe. See you next time with a hopefully interesting topic, hopefully soon. Until then, have fun and goodbye.